Hi everyone, welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode 162, brought to you most Fridays on 12.05 Eastern Time. We are your hosts, I'm Marwa. And I'm Anton. Hey Marwa, good to see you again today. Good to see you. So uh, I think our last tip on checksums uh, really uh, struck a nerve with a lot of people. Uh, both of us have, have received additional questions on you know, what kinds of things do I have to worry about? When do I need to use a checksum? More, you know, just more on this topic. Um, and uh, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that. You may remember episode 56, Marwa. Yes, it's it's about select lists and how are these those select lists have um, security concerns. Yeah, I'm really impressed at how how quickly you picked up what epi you you remembered what episode 56 was all about. Um, that's really that's 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 impressive. You got them all memorized. Um, yeah. So the idea is um, select lists. Um, you need to make sure that you validate it when when the user passes something back in a select list because if the if your select list has red, green, blue. Um, the user can just right click on it, inspect it, change the HTML a little bit, add in yellow. And if they submit yellow in, you're going to get yellow. And if you just write that to the database, you're going to have yellow in the database. So um, it's important to, if you care, it's important to validate your select lists. Um, but hey, Matt, Matt and I just had a meeting earlier yesterday. Um, so, uh, um, but it's important to validate other things as well if you care, right? If you're, if it, if you have sensitive, you know, if you care about what this data is coming in and you want to make sure it's it's there, you need to you need to do something to make sure that these things are correct. So there are other things that have vulnerabilities as well, right, Marwa? Yes. For example, um, display only items. So I'm going to share my screen. I created an example. Okay, great. Here I have different items and the total here is a display only item. So whenever I change one of these items, the total will be set. Again, for example, I will make the quantity two and as you can see, the total now is 80. I want to submit the value of the total and process it. I have okay. the button submit. When I click on it, I get this session state uh, protection violation error. Right, and you get that because the Apex engine knows that you said that this is a display only item. You're going to allow it to be submitted in and processed, but it's display only, which means the user shouldn't change it. So you you can't let the user you can't yet let this user change this item and submit it in. So how are you going to solve this? Exactly. So um, the way to do it is first I'm going to uh, turn off the attribute send on page submit of that display only item. I won't be sending this item. I have a okay. second hidden item, which is the total. And I created a computation to compute, to calculate again the value of that total. And then I will process that uh, computed total. Okay, so that's interesting. Now, you the reason that you want to do a separate hidden item here is because you you are submitting that total in and the way you've written this with pl sql code you could have just used the display only item and, and computed that but if you're using an automated form uh, uh from apex and you're using the automated dml apex is only going to write in that automated one things that actually got submitted so if you used the this display only item and then you still did your computation and everything there Apex would ignore it. It wouldn't get written. So it's important to make sure that, that you have this item that does get submitted back. And the way you wrote it here, that item could actually be protected. Right now we have it unprotected for a different reason, but that could be protected because you're not, you don't need to set it when it's coming back to the browser. Um, and so I'm going to say, I forgot to set our timer, but I'm going to guess we still have a couple minutes left. Um, so, uh, so, so that's important. I think those are a important pieces to this is that it's, it's great to do it through a computation like this. And I think this is the way you should do it in most cases. Um, but there's another scenario. Um, and that scenario is that there might be a reason you don't want to have to recompute it. You want to show it to the user, but for other reasons, you may want to actually accept what you've shown to the user to come back to the database, but you don't want the user to be able to change it. And so, for example, maybe your computation comes back to the database and it's very computational intensive. Instead of just calculating taxes, it does a whole bunch of things in the database. It takes two or three seconds. It's computationally intensive. You don't want to do it. Uh, you don't have to recompute that item. 
or possibly it comes back to the database. You call a web service and that web service calls you, charges you $2 for every time you, you process this and you don't want to have to do charge that again. So you send it back. So if we want to do that. How would we, um, how would we manage that? Yes. So I will allow, so I will change the display only item and then I will try to validate that value coming from the browser before processing it. So, Right, or you can use your, your hidden total item. I think either way is fine, but you do a validation, right? And so how, how are you gonna validate that? What are you val gonna validate it against? Against the checksum because- Ah, so right, we calculate a checksum. At the point that we do this, we also calculate a checksum, send that back to the browser. So we send back both the value and the checksum, right? Exactly. Um, and the key here is you want that checksum to be based upon not just the value you get back, but all of the values that went into it, right? Because, because that is the key is that, that it, if you only do it on that one thing, they could perhaps generate a value another way, get that checksum and re-inject the checksum. You want to make sure that your checksum is based on all of the things that you need it to be checked. Uh, based upon. Um, and so let's take a look at your validation. Your validation just checks. It does the same kind of thing. It, exactly. It okay. Um, so I think that these are complicated things. And I think the real thing people need to understand is anytime they set a value on the browser, the user has the ability to change that value. Right? They can just go in, right click, change it, and submit back anything they want. So anytime, whether you're using JavaScript or a dynamic action, uh, an Ajax call, anytime you set anything in the browser and submit it back to the database, you need to have come up with a way to make sure that that's safe. That's yes. the, biggest, the biggest takeaway. Exactly. Uh, well, Marwa, we may have stumbled past our five minute mark because I didn't set a timer, but we're pretty close. We're at 12 12. Um, so, um, I'm not going to be around next week, are you? Me neither. Me neither. Uh, and I don't think I'll be around the week after that either. So, um, so we're going to be gone at least one week. I hope everybody has. Um, oh, thanks, Rich. Um, I think I hope everybody has a great holiday. Um, they uh, enjoy family and friends. Um, Marwa, yes, do you have? Yes, I wish. I wish you all happy holidays. What was your question, Anton? Sorry, did not hear. Do you have any plans? Um, meeting with the family, basically. Perfect. Perfect. Excellent. All right. Well, do all the things. If you like the show, like the show. Um, tell your friends about it. Send your mom a letter. Uh, and we'll talk to you next year. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.